So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deb, this is Deb's Corner. I don't know what to call you guys. We have to figure out our name for, you know, my subscribers. But for now, welcome back. You guys are here, welcome. <sighs> so this video is going to be a little different than my usual videos because I wanted to talk about something near and dear to my heart, you know? So I'm, it's going to be more of leaning more into politics. I'm sorry if you don't like politics, but I'm not into politics, but I'm into my country, I guess. My, I would say my second country or my first country, whatever. I wanted to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart, but let's start. So Nigeria is about to go into our elections, our presidential elections. That's happened in February 25th, 2023 of this year. And I wanted to just talk about that. I also talk about my letter to Nigeria, my hopes, my dreams. We have three candidates right now. Atiku, we have um, Tinobu, and then we have Peter Obi. So I have my notes down here because there is there are some history that I want to talk about first before I go into it but essentially those three candidates are representing different parties but I'm going to give you the history of that and then I'll tell you what parties they're demonstrating and my feelings about that you notice I'm in a different location I want us to be near the sun and I want to be near my babies these are like my second babies plants so I wanted to be near them today so I wanted to switch locations and yeah so Nigeria is basically a democratic state, not basically, but Nigeria is a democratic state, right? Where there is executive power given to the president, right? President has executive power and then he then nominates a VP and then a, also his house members or members of his cabinet. There is also a national assembly, right? That national assembly includes the house of reps and also includes senators. So what happens, there are 36 states in Nigeria. So there are 10 House of Reps that are nominated or selected from each state, yeah, to be in the National Assembly. And there are also three members of Senate selected from each of those states, right, to be in the National Assembly. The House of Reps and the Senate both serve a four-year term. So after four years, each state would have to nominate another House of Rep and would have to nominate another member of Senate. So that's how it works. Pretty much similar to our, and when I say our, the United States way of choosing, you know, senators and all that stuff, right? There are major parties. There are like three major parties that I hear about all the time. So we have APC, which is the All Progressive Congress. Then we have PDP, which is the People's Democratic um, Party. And then we have, so it's APC, it's PDP, then there's NPC. NPC is basically the Northern People Congress. So we have those three major ones. We also have other parties that obviously, like the Labour Party. So, um, Atiku, we have Atiku, we have Tinubu, and then we have Pirobi. So Tinubu is an APC party, in the APC party, which is the All Progressive, um, All Progressive Congress, right? And then um, we have Atiku. Atiku is in PDP, which is the People's Democratic Party. And then we have Peter Obi. This is quite interesting, maybe not. Peter Obi was once in PDP. He was the former governor of um, a number of state. A number of state is in the southeast. So he was from that and um, he went into the LP party, which is the Labour's party. Um, so now he's in LP, Labour party. So there are different parties in Nigeria, but that's essentially how it works. So you represent each party. It's kind of like saying Republicans, Democrats, and you know, independents. That's essentially what that is, but we just have more of that. Um, so that's the deal with that. So. There are a lot of promises as with every politician, right? Of the things that they're gonna do in Nigeria, what they're gonna do for the Nigerian people, how they're gonna change Nigeria, whatever, whatever. But I don't like politicians, I don't believe them. I feel like it's a game. I feel like you know, you say whatever you say you can say. It's gonna like 
make you a beautiful candidate, right? So I think that's what politics is, and I'm, I'm, I don't care for it. I don't really listen to them. I, I kind of, if they've served in some kind of, you know, official, like, role, I would look at their, like, their history. I look at their, the way they served that position versus what they say. Um, I'm kind of like actions. I want to see what your actions say about you versus what you say about yourself. So if that makes any sense. The sun is going away. But anyway, so that's the whole deal. So Atiku, Tinubu, and Peter will be promised, they promise a lot of stuff, right? But we're going, if we're going with history, right? If we're going to track records, right? Because Peter will be was once a governor, was a former governor of Anamba State. And then we have, um, um, is it Tinubu? Tinubu, yeah. We have Tinubu. And he basically was a Lagos governor. Um, he was a Lagos governor, um, from, I think 1999 to 2007, so he served two terms. And then we have Atiku, who's a former vice president, right? And then we have Peter O.B., who's governor. So we have VPs, we have governor, governors running to become president of Nigeria. Right now, the current president in Nigeria is Buhari. And Buhari has served two terms. Buhari's promises right when he first was trying to get into office were promising but like he served his term and it's just terrible nigeria is terrible i'm not blaming it only on him but nigeria has become so huh, whatever we'll get into that later but those are the three candidates now i wanted to just maybe i should just talk about what they're all promising <laughs> because it, Again, I, I don't listen to what they say. I listen to more of their track record, right? So as they were governors, as um, Atiku was a VP, as Pidobi was a governor, and as um, um, Tinubu was a governor, I look at their track records. Now, Tinubu <laughs> was accused of corruption, right? And he denies it, obviously. I think every politician in Nigeria is corrupt. Every politician in I would speak of Nigeria because that's my home. I can't speak of any other place, but specifically focusing on Nigeria, I think all politicians are corrupt in some form or another. They are corrupt because as a whole, I think the society um, teaches people to to do wayo wayo to just get by. And wayo wayo means to just play tricks, con, like try to out outsmart your other, your neighbor, just to get one up, right? So I feel like everybody in Nigeria is like that to some extent because Nigeria is a state, is a state, is a place where people have to kind of do that to survive, like, because it's ingrained in the society. So you kind of have to do that to survive if you want to survive in Nigeria. You can be a good person, have a good heart, and try to live as a morally law-abiding citizen but you probably wouldn't get very far so i feel like the society just forces people to be like that even if they don't want to they just have to, to survive so that's my take on that mr tinibu right aims to just continue like the buhari era like policies but he wants to get the bank into a greater level than it is now he also wants to and costly fuel subsidies right and then channel that money to like agriculture and social welfare programs and expand military so now we have um so that's uh, um tinubu's promises that's what he's basing his elections on now we have a tiku and i'm reading my notes so my please excuse me if i'm looking down but we have Atuku. Atuku is promising to um, privatize the state's oil company. He's ensuring a greater role for the private sector in the economy. And he wants to liberalize the exchange rate and provide more equipment to the military. So this, these are two. Atiku and Tinubu military is important defense. I think that's important too. So yeah, those are the promises, whatever. Um, and then Peter will be promises um, triple 
um, power generation, I guess, because in Nigeria, we don't have steady electricity. We don't have steady electricity in the 21st century in Nigeria. And that thing, it, it just, it, it stops a lot of stuff in Nigeria. If you don't have steady electricity, what the hell can you accomplish? You can't accomplish much. You, I don't want to even get into this. Let's just sh and move on, right? Let's, let's finish with what he's promising. So he wants, he promises triple power generation. He wants to dismantle a multiple rate Naira exchange rate. I'm not understand what that means, but whatever. Let's just keep reading. He wants to gradually wean the economy off its reliance on oil by ramping up agricultural output and exports and better fund the military. So all three are about the military funding the military, creating greater military. And it's all about defense. I think that's very important. Like that is very important. Do you have to safeguard your country first before you can then, you know, do for your country. So your country has to be well protected. So that's, that's a great, those are great promises, right? We have one evil, one Yoruba, and then we have one Northern Northerner, right? So those are, those are the candidates. Okay. Now that we kind of get a brief, like, okay, of uh, understanding of how Nigeria works, how the political system works, we can now dig deeper into the people, you know, and the culture and everything else that comes with the whole politics. I think the head, which is the president, right, determines how Nigeria will run as a whole. So let's, now that we understand that, let's go into this. So I have a letter for Nigeria. Dear Nigeria, I have a love-hate relationship with you. There are times where I feel like you've betrayed me, but I would like to say to you that I do want to come back. I do want to invest in you. I do want to believe that everything that you promise, that you actually mean it. But looking at situations looking around, looking at how people are just going by day by day. What you say, what you promise, and what actually is, doesn't match. <sighs> Nigeria, when will we get better? When will we finally realize that the things that we've been doing in the past have not been working? That ultimate change has to come with radical 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 choices choices that people may not really agree with but that is beneficial down the line i'm talking about radical choices that the people both benefit from and see with their eyes, that change is actually happening. I want to come back home. I want to come back home. Nigeria, you failed us as your people. And I don't know if that feeling of betrayal would totally be gone because as we continue to see news, continue to read on articles about the state of Nigeria, continue to just hear my people, your people complain about things that they shouldn't be complaining about. Let's talk about steady electricity in the 21st century where your neighbors actually have steady electricity and you can't even provide that for your citizens. I guess I'm trying to say, if you know something that's going to help your people succeed and grow, but you don't want to do it, is that not wickedness? I know it's selfishness, but is that not wickedness? Because you have the tool to propel your citizens into people that they ought to be, into people that will turn Nigeria into a, mm, into a powerful, powerful nation.
but you don't want to because hey I write in my own pockets my own personal pockets be filled up first before I attend to my citizens when does it get to a point where politicians where you just go hey I have enough I, my family has enough we don't want any more. Let's now focus our energy on building Nigeria into what it should be. When is it enough? When is it enough? And maybe it's never going to be enough because greed has no limit. It would take over in situations where it doesn't need to take over. But I think there has to be a point where we stop and say, when is enough enough? And when can we just like, just focus on the society? I often have dreams about returning back to Nigeria in the summer with my family and just relaxing and just being with nature. Just relaxing, walking on the ground where my, you know, parents walked when they were little my grandparents walked when they were raising my mom or my dad. I'm just seeing the red earth and just say, ah, feeling like you're home. I often dream about that. But that dream is always cut short when I hear a complaint from my cousins who are living back home. When I hear complaints from my aunts, uncles who are living back home. When I hear about people talking about the state of Nigeria, and this is not just media, but actual people talking about the state of Nigeria. That dream is broken because the dream and reality is not matching. And when that doesn't go hand in hand, you quickly tell yourself that there is no hope for Nigeria. There is no hope. Because we've had so many politicians come in and say, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to strengthen this, we're going to build this, we're going to... And nothing has come to pass. Instead, what you see happening is corruption. It's stealing resources that are supposed to be allocated to actually building the things that they promised to build. When is enough enough? When do politicians say enough is enough? You can only have so much millions, billions. You can only have so much. After a while, it gets boring. When you die, you can't take that with you. Yes, granted, you leave it to the next generation, next generation passes on to the next generation. That's a way to ensure that your family is well off down the line. But what about the normal citizen who doesn't even have money to eat three square meals a day? What about those people? What can we do to help those people? If we are indeed human beings with a heart who have blood flowing in through our veins, then we do and we can and we are capable of thinking about others. It's just that we kind of just ignore that. But when is enough enough? When do we just leave greed and then think about others? So Nigeria, this election coming up on February 25th is an important one. I don't know why I feel like, oh my God, this is the time when things are going to turn around for Nigeria. But I have a glimpse of hope that if my presidential candidate, the one that I would have voted for if I was in Nigeria, goes into office, that things will indeed turn around. But I may be dreaming too. I may not be facing reality. I may just be dreaming. But if my dreams become reality, I do hope that 
there is a change in Nigeria. We abroad are watching. People in Nigeria are watching. And we just hope. We just hope. We just hope that Nigeria will turn around. Signing off. That a Nigerian diasporan that seeks that seeks to return back to Nigeria but can't even envision living in Nigeria, yet alone visiting because of the state of Nigeria at the moment. So Nigeria, we have to do better. We have to do better. And it all not only starts with Nigeria, but it's people, Nigerian citizens, Nigerian brothers and sisters. We as individuals have to do better. We have to be better. We have to recognize when we see something that's corrupt, when we see something that somebody's doing that's not supposed to be done, that we don't enable them. And when I say enable them, you as a business entity, when somebody's doing something that is not normal, that is not supposed to be done in business, that we don't just turn our heads or that we just don't allow them to do it, especially if it's a customer. You don't just allow because, oh, I'm going to lose this much money and that much money. I get it. If you lose that much money, you cannot survive. It's all about survival. I get it. But it starts somewhere. And maybe it's easier for me to say because I'm here and I have the luxury of just living in a society where things are working the way they should be working. Maybe I have that privilege to say that. Had I been living in Nigeria and um, had I been trying to survive, would I do the same thing? Turn my, my head, turn my eyes away from corruption and enable it. I don't know. I don't know. But because I've been exposed to how a society should run, I know that by doing that, in the long run, it does help. It does help to create order, structure, checks and balances, it does help. It's hard at first when you're not used to it, but as you do it slowly and slowly, step by step, it does help. So Nigerian people, we need to do better. We need to do better. It starts with you guys. It starts with the way you treat your neighbors. It, start the w it starts with the way you treat people not in your family. It starts with looking beyond your family problems and noticing problems around you. Not your extended family, not my long, long, no. Actual strangers, looking at strangers and seeing what they need and being an instrument of change in their lives. That's where it starts. But my letter to Nigeria is a pretty long one. I, I can keep going on and on about it, but I'm going to stop now. Bye.